Welcome to another episode of Life and Whiskey. As always, I'm Jordan, and today we are not going to be looking at Weller Antique 107. Um, I am going to be sipping on it here um, just a little bit. Uh, we got all this beautiful whiskey over here that uh, I've picked up recently um, that needs drinking and sampling and discussing, um, which we will definitely be doing here not too far in the future. However, um, my wife and I recently, just this past week, had the opportunity to go to the tasting library here in town, and they had a collection of whiskey um, that is rare and typically fairly difficult to get your hands on. And uh, so I wanted to discuss those. So it's not as cool. You don't get to see the bottles. I don't get to give you like in the moment tasting notes and whatever else. But I think it'll be beneficial to you because um, several of the whiskeys people are kind of chasing after. They're expensive. They're very hard to find. And uh, several of them I don't believe are worth your effort. So I'm going to help you cross those off the list. Um, because I just don't think it's worth your time, energy, or money to try and track them down. If you're so fortunate as to find them just locally, happenstance, you can make the call whether or not you want to spend the kind of coin that they're commanding um, at that moment and uh, go from there. Uh, but um, yeah, here's what I'm, I'm just going to go through, say what I have to say. Uh, so we're going to start with the Weller. So what we have here at the Tasting Library most years in the past, um, you know, we've only lived here in town for five years, and for three of the five years at the Tasting Library, right around November, December, um, they have the Pappies show up, and they might have like two bottles of each or something like that. Um, and so, as I've mentioned, you know, several times in other videos, I've had the opportunity to sample the Pappy 15, 20, and 23 year old. Um, I'm not a fan, not a fan of any of the three. Uh, I think they're all overhyped. Um, they're, you know, they're very smooth and oily and clingy, but they're way over oaked in my opinion. So unless you like very astringent oak, um, I mean, it tastes like you're chewing on an oak stave. If you're chasing the pappies, you're doing it, in my opinion, just for nostalgia or, you know, for bragging rights or whatever. Because if you're going to spend, you know, $1,000, $500, $2,500, $3,000, whatever it's going to cost you to buy any of those bottles, I think you're completely wasting your time and your money. Now, if you want the bragging rights, go for it. But if you actually want an enjoyable dram, that's not where you should be looking. So... Um, you know, in, in that setting, like here at the tasting library, it was $23 and 95 cents. This is all before COVID. So now add all the inflation and stuff, who knows what the price would be, but for an eighth of an ounce. Okay. So just like literally one swallows worth of Pappy 23 was $23. Um, bit of a joke, but at least it gives you the opportunity to taste something without spending Thousands of dollars, right? So <clears throat> they do that same kind of thing. I have not seen Pappy in two years now. Um, uh, of course, in 2019, the tasting library was closed. In 2020, um, they did not. I think they reopened. Uh, maybe they only reopened in 2021. It was 2019 and 2020. I think they were kind of closed, having staffing issues, whatever else. Anyways, so this video... In regards to that, we had the opportunity to try Weller 12-year, uh, the Weller CYPB, the Weller single, single Barrel, and the Weller Full Proof, along with Stag Jr., and of course they had Weller, Weller Special Reserve and Weller Antique 107 as well. Uh, we've owned, I've owned the 107 and the Special Reserve, you know, when we could get it, when we got when Wyoming was allocated bottles, um, the Special Reserve I could pick up for $23. Uh, this 107, is it 107? Yeah, 107, I could pick up for, I want to say it was like 
46 dollars something like that um i think you shouldn't be paying anything more than that for weller um and of course weller is the line in which um you know the properly appropriated barrels are put into the pappy lineup um and people know that pappy is essentially weller um and so that kind of fueled the craze for the Wellers, but here's kind of my notes on the Weller 12 year. Um, so it's 45% ABV, 90 proof. Um, the nose is kind of a light apple, a very floral, like uh, honeysuckle, uh, almost rye, MGP rye type profile uh, with a light brown sugar and a hint of oak. The taste was very, very hot. It drank well above 90%. Uh, it was very peppery and bitey. Uh, up front, it had a, a candy sugar and a floralness to it, but it was a fairly simple profile. There wasn't a whole lot going on there. The finish was very watery, thin, and floral with a hint of oak, and it was kind of underlaying with just a touch of sugar in there. The one thing I'll say is the nose almost smells like it was finished so it had a very nice nose on it uh almost like an angel's envy and um it uh it, it was very floral in the taste for most of the stuff um but both the um the weller 12 year and the single barrel which we'll get to had very bitter tannic um, presentations to it. They were very, very punchy, very bitey, um, not pleasurable at all. It was just a bitterness that kind of went throughout the whole profile. And for those two reasons, or for that reason alone, I would, I would steer you away from the 12 year and the single barrel. I don't think they're worth your money, but, uh, we drank them in order of proof. So after Weller 12, uh, we drank the CYPB, uh, which was 47.5%. Um, the nose was very light and floral, uh, light fruit, um, and it you know leans into Buffalo Trace, of course, as far as a profile. Uh, the taste was um, syrupy mouthfeel, uh, very creamy, very honey and sweet. Uh, the finish was very creamy, had a very light oak and honey for like five seconds. Um, it was much better uh, than any of the other um than the weller 12 or the single barrel um so next we tried the single barrel which was at 48.5 percent abv um it was a very subtle nose a slight floral ripe apple slight honey um honeysuckle to it um so for a higher proof you couldn't smell alcohol or anything. I mean, the nose was almost non-existent. You really, really had to stick your nose in there. And even then, you couldn't pull out a whole lot. The taste, again, was kind of creamy, floral, a little brown sugar. The finish, very, very tannic and bitter. Um, and um, the nose, or some notes were uh, apricot and ethanol on the nose. So it came out of the glass as ethanol. Um a little bit of light fruit in there. Uh, the taste is creamy mouthfeel, clingy, sweet, floral, brown sugar, uh, and then very watery into the finish, and then a very harsh tannic bite uh, at the end. Um, I mean, it was both the 12 and the single barrel were so harsh and bitey and tannic y that, like, even with a couple of glasses of water afterwards, you couldn't hardly get that tannic bite out of your mouth. You had to eat some crackers and stuff and really try and um, wash it out. I mean, it was unpleasant. Um, and then finally, at 57%, the Weller Full Proof. Now, the Weller Full Proof would be my number one as far as the lineup goes, um, as far as taste. Um, it was very ethanol heavy in the nose, um, but floral, uh, a little bit of bubble gum, uh, apple, and uh, in the second nosing, it was very vanilla caramel. Uh, the taste was watery thin up front, but then a very hard candy sweet and vanilla kind of pushing into the middle with a finish that was, um, was uh, very thin.
very thin and then gone and then it pushed into a light oak honey and ethanol it was the best of all of them it, there was no harsh bitter tannic component to it at all um and it was very easy sipping so it didn't have the most complex palate it just had the most enjoyable drinking experience now we did uh my wife and i missed an opportunity to buy a bottle of the foolproof here uh my wife was out stopped at the liquor store um saw that there was a bottle there came home told me about it and then we watched a review of it and then we we're like all right fine let's go check it out because it was like 125 bucks something like that um and then uh we went there and by the time we went back it was gone so in a 30 minute time frame or thereabouts uh or maybe it was an hour uh somebody had come in and purchased that bottle and it was gone so we missed our opportunity to uh, own our own bottle of that, but it was 125 bucks for the complexity or lack thereof. Yeah, it'd be hard to say that it's worth 125 dollars in my opinion. Um, again, if you want bragging rights or whatever, sure, it's definitely worth 125 dollars for that. But you can get way better complexity and interesting whiskey for a lot less money. So there is that. So. There you go, those are the Wellers, the Weller 107. You can definitely check out my review of the Weller 107 and the Weller Special Reserve on in my previous videos. Um, that's a good portion of the Weller lineup anyways. Um, you know, really to be honest with you, the, the 107 and the Special Reserve are um, better drinking whiskeys in my opinion and I think the Weller Special Reserve so the cheapest one in the lineup is the best out of all of them um, as far as a pleasurable drinking experience the 107 also has that harsh tannic bite very forward in the profile if you enjoy that if you enjoy that tannic um, astringency in your drinking experience then you know the Weller lineup has a lot to offer you uh, I personally don't enjoy that though um, so there you have it for the Weller line now uh, switching gears here uh, they also had um, another whiskey that is pretty much impossible to find for most accounts 165 so uh stag jr they also had a bottle of that and i have to say now stag jr in my opinion it's worth i don't know what it's gonna run you i just saw somewhere online they had a bottle listed for like 300 bucks it's not a $300 whiskey. I think MSRP on it's like 60 bucks. If you can find a bottle for maybe 120 or under, buy it. Stag Jr., if every bottle is as good as the one we had, um, which I believe they are because I think they are bottling for a profile, they're excellent. Uh, I mean, it was just start to finish very enjoyable it was a hundred and thirty point two proof or sixty five point one percent abv now in this book it's listed at 134.4 uh, i think that has since changed and this book's from 2015 um but that stag jr even at the highest proof out of all of the whiskeys we tried uh sixty five point one percent drank like 90 proof i mean it didn't have an overwhelming ethanol nose it didn't have an over uh spicy ethanol bite in the flavor profile it was what you would think an expensive whiskey should taste like it was full of character full of flavor very nuanced and something that you really needed to spend some time with now we took an eyedropper with us when we went and we took our own glen karen uh to really get the most out of the drinking experience and we did water it down a little bit um now uh this this book is by susan regler and uh michael veach and both of them said water down 
the whiskey quite a bit. In fact, Mike says, um, you know, water down to 50 50. Uh, we did that, and personally, I would not recommend doing that. I think that is way too watered down. Maybe when it was at 134.4, the, the warehouse they were pulling from or whatever they were pulling from had a different flavor profile, but the current Stag Juniors, man, you could drink it straight um, neat without any problem, and just a drop or two of water with it does liven up some of the sweeter aspects of it. Um, but it doesn't need the water, in my opinion. Uh, it drank, and my wife agreed. She thought the exact same thing, that the just the neat pour without any water was the best expression of that Stag Jr. Um, so <clears throat> what we found was that uh, on the nose, it had a surprisingly light nose. The ethanol didn't jump out. The, the nose characteristics didn't jump out um, very much. We got vanilla, caramel. Just a hint of cinnamon. Uh, on the taste, uh, we got chocolate, um, chocolate, honey, uh, caramel, apricot, um, you know, some of those things. Uh, and then the, the finish um, was not what, the, what these people found. Uh, the finish I found to be sweet, a little bit thin and fading, and then you got a really nice lingering light oak uh sweet oak with a vanilla and sugary sweetness underlaying that lasted so between my first sip and like my second sip it was probably at least two minutes and for most of that time frame that flavor sat on my tongue and just kind of enveloped and developed um my 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 T uh, tongue and it was very very enjoyable um in my notes here i said water added makes nose all vanilla and creamy caramel without water uh it was not hot to drink and water brings um the baking spices forward kind of the cinnamons and the nutmegs and stuff like that um it was just a good sipping whiskey that had character that if you were willing to sit and play with it and experience it, it would open up over time. And pro I, I would not think I'm lying if I told you you could probably pull 10 to 15 different flavor notes out of it over time or with, you know, playing with water and stuff like that. And uh, I think it, it, it was a extremely enjoyable experience and a very, very nice sipping whiskey. Um, really, really enjoyed that experience and that time with my wife. Um, so we're 18 minutes into this and I know you probably don't care because, you know, I don't have the bottle sitting here and whatever else. I also don't have the prices on any of those whiskeys. I'm pretty certain the vast majority of places you are going to find any of those, um, any of the, the, the four wellers, the, the 12, the CYPB, the full proof, and the single barrel, along with Stag Jr., I think you're going to find that they're going to be over 100 bucks. Um, maybe even pushing the two or three, depending on secondary price uh, or how much your liquor store is trying to rip you off. Um, you're going to have to make the call on that. I don't think any of those whiskeys are worth that. Um, the last one we tried. Um, now, if you've watched any of my videos you'll uh, about like whiskey pricing, you'll know that the flavor component, how good something is, is not factored in to what the price tag is on a whiskey. What does factor in is how rare is it, how hard is it to find, how hard is it to get, um, how much quantity and supply is there. So everybody who's out chasing all the unicorns may come to find out that the unicorns, you know, taste like dirt uh, and that they just got taken just because um, supply and demand, right? That's what really dictates the whiskey price tag. And uh, we had the chance to taste uh, Glenn Farkless, the Family Cast Series, 1972. And uh, this bottle was distilled in 1972. 
and bottled May 30th, 2011. Okay, so it was, um, you know, pretty, pretty aged, uh, and it was bottle, or it was one of 565 bottles bottled at 44.7% ABV. Okay, so there was only 565 bottles, so fairly rare. The price tag uh, from the store was, I don't know if you could see, let's see here, I'm not very good at this, if you can see that, but it's $459.99, so four, or sorry, I read that wrong, $549.99, so $550 for this whiskey. Uh, for my own personal preferences, now it was twenty something dollars for a one ounce pour. Uh, so my wife and I tried it. Um, for my personal preferences, I wouldn't have given you, you know, forty dollars for it. Uh, it was not my flavor set when it comes to Scotch. Um, it was, uh, it's a Highland type Scotch. Um, and it's all the sweet, light notes of a Highland. Um, so the nose was very malty, sweet. Um, it smelled to me exactly like a Highland Park smells. So if you've ever had Highland Park uh, single malt, it smelled exactly like that to me. Uh, there was no nuance really in there you might be able to tease out a little bit of a baking spice maybe but it was very much um just malt and then a hint of apricot or a peach maybe kind of a fruit jamminess if you smelled from the top of the glass um you know so it had a lot of sweet components to it uh and then uh the baking spices in the middle on the taste, it was extremely thin and watery up front. So, like, for the first, again, two or three beats, nothing, like drinking water. Uh, then it had a very creamy mouthfeel, and it opens up into a very sweet, uh, light fruit. So, again, that apricot kind of peachy area, uh, and a little bit of a butterscotch. And then the finish... Um, moves into a baking spice and a vanilla cream um it was very thin very sweet and approachable and light but um you know if i'm going to be paying 550 dollars for something i uh, better give you a rub and tug or something along with the flavor profile and that for something that was watery thin um sweet if you like sweet stuff, great. Um, but I mean, there just wasn't a ton of character there. There wasn't a ton of depth to it. Um, it was kind of a one hit wonder and uh, watery thin. Um, just not at all what I'm looking for. You know, I'm an Isla guy. I like Isla Scotch. I like that peaty, smacky around a little bit, heavy smoke. Um, Salty, briny, iodine, you know, all the all the descriptors of an Isla Scotch. That's more of my flavor profile, although I do like, you know, a space side and monkey shoulder and whatever else. Um, that was not that at all. It was a very fruity Highland, and I just am not that guy. So if that's your cup of tea... Go ahead and take a look at at, at it. But uh, again, Glenn Farkless, the 1972. There's only 565 bottles out there, um, which makes it rare. But maybe it's rare just because it's not that great, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, if that's something you really enjoy, maybe you want to check that out. Anyways, uh, Tasting Library, if you ever get a chance to go to somewhere like that or a whiskey bar where they actually have a large variety of whiskeys to try, Go do it. It's your best bet to be able to get your hands on stuff that you're not going to be able to find on a routine basis. Or maybe if you can find it, you just can't afford it all. It's it's a good way to just, you know, stick your toe in the water a little bit and see if it's something you like. So, you know, if I had purchased that bottle for $550, I'd be 
pissed to say the least like I'd be kicking myself pretty hard um, because it wasn't that good so hopefully along those same lines watching these videos that I make or watching other whiskey reviewers um, will help you get a good idea of what it is um, that people are finding in these whiskeys and whether or not it's something that you think you want to spend your hard-earned money on uh, especially during these inflationary times and uh, whiskey is going to get more expensive so um, you want to keep that in mind uh, you might want to check out some of my whiskey under $10 reviews. I personally think there's some good whiskey to be had for under $20. Um, that bird dog I just reviewed would be a great example of that. Um, so go ahead, check them out. Check out uh, Life and Whiskey on BitChute, Minds, Rumble, uh, YouTube. Uh, drop in a comment down below any of the experiences you may have with any of the whiskeys that I just got done discussing. Uh, what the prices are in your area and whether or not you are actually able to obtain any of those bottles I just discussed. The Weller lineup, uh, the Stag Jr. or the Glen Farkless uh, 1972. Um, you know, just curious to hear what you have to say and what things cost in your area. So go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. I know this has been a pretty dry 26 minute video but we did look or we did discuss i don't know five or six different whiskeys for you so um yeah i know there wasn't a whole lot of drinking going on but something to consider also the life content's going to start pouring in here any second we have all of these whiskeys coming up we got the laws four grain bourbon pendleton 1910 uh highland or high west uh high country we got rabbit hole derringer we got ben riak original we got the belvaney the week of pete jameson stout cask edition uh knob creek nine year uh clyde maze and um the jameson cold brew I think that's all the whiskeys that we have on tap coming up. So stick with us and uh, we'll go through these reviews. I, if you're watching on YouTube, I already have videos scheduled all the way out into 2023. So uh, if you're interested in watching more than one video a week, check out BitChute and Rumble and Minds. I got two videos a week there uh, and I'm probably going to be dropping more videos Um going forward as i got the whiskey reviews done i'll probably start adding some life content and conversation i got some notes here on discussions about uh millennials work ethics the current work environment and how things are going and uh my little man in the back there hollering at me and um yeah so i need to go anyways thanks for watching you guys take care have yourselves a great day and we'll catch you in the next video